the doll, please. Me. Oh, Mrs. Wire. Coming. to be the most desirable kind of roommates, do you? Uh, cockroaches, huh? Yes, precisely. Now, I have had very little experience with cockroaches in my life, but the few that I have seen have been the pedestrian kind. The kind that walk. These, Mrs. Wire, appear to be flying cockroaches. I was shocked. I was literally stunned when one of them just took up off the floor and started whizzing through the air around and around in a circle, just missing my face by barely a couple of inches. Mrs. Wire, I sat on the edge of this bed and wept. I was just so shocked and disgusted. Imagine flying cockroaches. Something I never dreamed to be in existence, just whizzing around and around and around in front of my face. Why, Mrs. Wire, I want you to know Lying cockroaches are nothing to be surprised at. They have them all over. Even uptown they have them. But that, <laughs> that is may be true, Mrs. Wire, but I may as well tell you, I have a horror of roaches. Even the plain, old-fashioned, pedestrian kind. <laughs> as for the slime type, if I'm staying on here, these flying cockroaches have got to be gotten rid of and gotten rid of at once. Now, how am I going to stop them flying cockroaches from coming in through the windows? But that, however, is not what I came here to do. I don't know how, Mrs. Wire, but suddenly there must be a way. All I know is they must be gotten rid of before I will sleep here one more night. But if I woke in the night and found one on my bed, I'd have convulsions. I swear to goodness, I would simply die of convulsions. If you excuse me for saying so, Mrs. Hardshellmore, you're much more likely to die from over drinking than cockroach convulsions. <laughs> What's this here? Larkspaw lotion. Well, I use it to take the old polish off my nails. Very fastidious, yes. What do you mean? There's not a house in the old quarter that don't have roaches. But not in such enormous quantities, do they? I tell you, this place is actually crawling with them. Well, it ain't as bad as all that. <laughs> <laughs> now, by the way, you ain't yet paid me the rest of this week's rent. I don't want to get you off the subject of roaches, but nevertheless, I want to collect that money. I'll pay you the rest of the rent as soon as you've exterminated these roaches. You'll have to pay me the rest of the rent right away or get out. I intend to get out unless these roaches get out. Then get out then and quit just talking about it. <laughs> you must have lost your mind. I can't get out right now. Now what did you mean about the roaches? I meant what I said about the roaches. They are not, in my opinion, the most desirable roommates. Okay. Don't run with them. Pack your stuff and move where they don't have roaches. You mean that you insist upon having the roaches? <laughs> no, I mean I insist upon having the rent you owe me. <laughs> right at the moment, that is out of the question. Oh, out of the question, is it? Yes, and I'll tell you why. The quarterly payments that I receive from the man who was taking care of the rubber plantation have not been forwarded yet. I've been expecting them to come in for several weeks now, but in a letter I received this morning, it seems there's been some little misunderstanding over last year's taxes. Oh, now, so will you stop that? Back. I've heard enough of that goddamn rubber plantation, that Brazilian rubber plantation. You think I've been in this business 17 years without learning nothing about your kind of woman? 
What is the implication in that remark? Well, I suppose the men that you have in here nights come in to discuss the Brazilian rubber plantation. You must be crazy to say such a thing as that. I hear what I hear, and I know what's going on. I know you spy. I know you listen at doors. I never spy, and I never listen at doors. The first thing a landlady in the French Quarter learns is not to see and not to hear, but only to collect your money. As long as that comes in, okay, I'm blind, I'm deaf, I'm dumb. But as soon as it stops, I recover my hearing, and also my sight, and also the use of my voice. If necessary, I go to the phone and call up the chief of police, who happens to be an in-law of my sister's. I heard last night that argument over money. What argument? What money? Oh, he shouted so loud I had to shut the front window to keep the noise from carrying out on the street. I heard no mention of any Brazilian plantations, but plenty other things were plainly referred to in that little midnight conversation you had. <laughs> Lux for lotion. To take the polish off of nails? Am I in my infancy, am I? Well, that's right on a par with a wonderful rubber plantation. Stop! Oh, it's you. Stop persecuting this woman. The second Mr. Shakespeare enters the scene. I heard your demon howling in my sleep. Sleep? <laughs> what I think you mean is your drunken stupor. I, I rest because of my illness. Have I no right to illness? rest? Alcoholic! Don't try to pull that beautiful wool over my eyes. I'm glad you come in. Now, I repeat for your benefit what I just said to this woman. <laughs> I'm done with deadbeats. Now, is that plain to you? Completely fed up with all you quarter rats, half-breeds, drunkards, degenerates who try to get by our promises, lies, delusions. Please, please, please stop that shrinking. It isn't necessary. Oh, that coat of arms on the wall that you got from the junk shop? The woman who sold it told me. <laughs> One of the Habsburgs. Oh, yes, a titled lady. The Lady of Lux for Lotion, there's your title. <laughs> Stop badgering this unfortunate little woman. Is there no mercy left in the world anymore? What has become of compassion and understanding? Where's God? Where's Christ? What if there is no Brazilian rubber plantation? <laughs> I tell you, there is! There is! What if there is no rubber king in her life? There ought to be rubber kings in her life. Is she to be blamed because it's necessary for her to compensate for the cruel deficiencies of reality by the exercise of a little, what shall I say, God-given imagination? No, no, no! No, it isn't imagination! I'll ask you to please stop spitting me in the face of those high-phone speeches. You and your 780-page masterpiece. Right on a par with the lady of locks for lotion as far as the use of imagination is concerned. Oh, uh, well now, what if I am? Suppose there is no 780-page masterpiece in existence. Supposing there is in existence no masterpiece whatsoever. What of that, Mrs. Wire? But only a few, a very few, vain scribblings in my old trunk bottom. Suppose I wanted to be a great artist, but lacked the force and the power. Suppose my books fell short of the final chapter, even my verses languished and completed. Suppose the curtains on my exalted fancies rose on magnificent dramas, but the house lights darkened before the curtain fell. Suppose that all these unfortunate things are true. And suppose that I, stumbling from bar to bar, from drink to drink, till I sprawl at last on the lice-infested mattress of this brothel. <laughs> and suppose that I, to make this nightmare bearable for as long as I must continue to be the helpless protagonist of it, suppose that I ornament, illuminate, glorify it with dreams and fictions and fancies such as the existence of a 780-page masterpiece, impending Broadway productions, marvelous volumes of verse in the hands of publishers only waiting for signatures to release them. <sighs> 
suppose that I lived in this world of pitiful fiction. What satisfaction can he give you, good woman, to tear it to pieces, to crush it, to call it a lie? I tell you this, now listen. There are no lies, but the lies that are stuffed in the mouth by the hard-knuckled hand of need, the cold iron fist of necessity, Mrs. Wire. So, I am a liar. Yes, but your world is built on a lie. Your world, your world is a hideous fabrication of lies, lies, lies. Oh. No, I'm tired. I've had my say, and I have no money to give you. So, get away. Leave this woman in peace. Leave her alone. Go on, get out. Tomorrow morning. Go. Money or out she go. Go. Both of you, both together. Seven hundred and eighty page masterpiece in Brazilian rubber plantation. Baloney. Roaches everywhere. Walls, floor, ceiling. The place is infested with them. I know. <laughs> I suppose there were no roaches on the Brazilian rubber plantation. Uh, 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 no, of course there weren't. Everything was immaculate always. <laughs> always. Immaculate. The floors were so bright and clean, they used to shine like mirrors. <laughs> I know. And I suppose the windows afforded a very lovely view. Indescribably lovely. How far were you from the Mediterranean? <laughs> no, the Mediterranean. <laughs> Only a mile or two. <laughs> On a very clear morning, I dare say it was possible to distinguish the white chalk cliffs of Dover across the channel. Yeah. In very clear weather, it was. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chekhov. <laughs> Anton Pavlovich Chekhov. Thank you, Mr. Chekhov. 